Ms. Chaturvedi. I'll, I'll stress on the gender question a little by asking you. Do you feel that there is a gender divide in the voting pattern? To put it in other words, do women vote differently from men in rural areas? Okay, uh, I was actually going to come to that, you know, that I'd be doing my gender a lot of injustice if I would leave a conversation of them out of this entire conversation because rural wages impact women a lot. So there are many women who are working in the fields, but they are unpaid laborers and they'll never be part of the formal economy because we just totally look through them, look past them. And we expect them to be part of this, you know, the, the machinery of ecosystem of helping. But when they think of, you know, expecting some kind of financial uh, benefit of it, they are denied that. So that is one challenge that we are facing. Now, in terms of how women are voting, 100%, women are voting when they think through who they think as their leader, what is he doing for them, what is she thinking about it, what is she promising to me? So the women are definitely voting. Uh, earlier there was this entire set feeling that women will vote as per whatever their family asks them to vote or they, they don't have a mind of their own. That was a thought process. But women are proving all of them wrong. They go out there, they vote their mind, and you have surprising outcomes as well. <laughs> they outnumber men. They choose their, who they're voting for. And you see surprising outcomes as well because till now, women as a, a you know, vote bank was totally ignored. Yeah. Now suddenly every, every political party is waking up to it in terms of representation also. The special session that was called uh, for uh, you know, women representation, increasing the representation, unfortunately it will not be applicable in 2024. It has come for a future date and that future date is unknown. However, it is a conversation which was happening for past two decades and finally it has passed into an act but implementation no act in the world has come you know has been passed like this by the way in the world in our history world history democracy as a history nowhere but anyway i would say it's a positive sign and yes they are voting their mind they are making their vote count they are coming out in larger numbers and that is why you will see a lot of policies which would be women centric Mr. Ulaka, uh, you represent a constituency which is predominantly tribal, tribals outnumber other communities. So do you feel that the agenda for the tribal people are a little different from rural people in general or are this, are this two the same? No, it will be a bit different. Um, you need to understand in depth uh, the issue of tribals here. Uh, when we had the government, we wanted to provide rights to the tribals. Like when we came up with uh, FRA, PESA, Indira Gandhi ji, she intervened, she gave two acres of land, she gave uh, like uh, goats and all to the people, she tried to establish them, build houses for them. Indira Avas Yodana Raji started by her name only. Now what we are saying is that uh, some 2014, uh, the government which is in power, they've been trying to dilute all the laws which safeguards the interest of tribals. For tribals, our biggest uh, value or resource is our land. Land alienation is a problem. So if you dilute the lands, like uh, recently, the, I think the environment bills were amended, where uh, now the forest officers in uh, the local uh, area, the, they have the power to override, uh, like they can decline the Forest Right Act and uh, deny the land to the tribals. So systematically what is happening is, they are working in such a way, land which is our resource, this be taken away from tribals, like I gave an example, I had an intervention in parliament. Bharat Mala project goes through my constituency. And uh, the tribal, he can't sell his land. And he need to have five acres of land before he can sell to another tribal. So this causes, say, historically our transactions are very less. So one acre of land for a tribal is around 50,000 rupees. That same one acre of land for a non-tribal would be at least a one crore rupees in my area. Now it's fine. For safeguarding the interests of tribals, they're doing it is fine that they, they won't be landless. Now, what the government is doing, they're diluting the laws where projects like Bharat Mahala or big industries, they can uh, like take over the land of the tribals. This is really something which like, we are losing our land anyway and we are, they're taking over 50,000 rupees. So we are losing the land by the dilution of the laws and they're doing it by uh, um, sabotaging our constitution or like... Uh, they are suspending MPs, they are not, uh, we are in the well, they are passing the bills, there are no discussion happening. 
and this is something which will be in our agenda and we'll have special focus on tribals we have done a lot for tribals and we also know what the government is doing to take up the right of the tribals this will come in our manifesto as well we will try to explain one thing is uh, something we had a like uh, limitation or lacking was we uh, didn't understand that the election campaign has changed now you need election management you need narrative setting you need to go to the people explain them exactly what you are going to do this we have learned from our mistakes and we are going to take care of that and a detailed discussion we have a very good team manifesto team led by chidavaram ji where we are focusing on each and every section of the people the tribal will be different from other things but overall social justice political justice and economic justice this will apply for the tribals as well mr chaturvedi uh